All right, Gray, without spoiling too much for you, I'm not going to spoil too much for you, but what did you think of the first two episodes of One Piece? Yeah, it's really, it's like somewhat for someone who doesn't know anything about the show, it, I really liked it. It's like, yeah, I, I, I'm i sure the the anime diehards say, ah, the, the casting sucks, the acting sucks, but as a normie, it's really good. It's like, um, it's, it brought me in, it made me invested into the universe of One Piece and the plot. And I might dabble on the anime a little bit. I'll, I'll try. I'll finish the entire season this coming week. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll watch all, everything so that I can keep up. Then maybe, maybe I'll, I'll touch on the anime a little bit. But yeah, it's so far it's doing a really good job. And people, everyone's saying that it, it, it gets even better in the later episodes compared to the first few episodes. So yes. I'm kind of excited to get through the entire season for sure. Yeah, which I'll- I haven't, I haven't felt in a long time. It's like it's always, it's always when I watch a TV show or a movie that's from the West. It's like, okay, how, how sucky is this in the scale of one to the? How bad is this? Mm-hmm. It's, it's so refreshing that it's actually legit good, good. Especially when I was expecting that it would be bad. Yeah, like, like for me, I always go into like movies or TV shows with like extremely low expectations. So if it does fail, like I'm not disappointed too much. It's like, oh, I was expecting this, right? Mm-hmm. But um, but yeah, I I would say by the end of by the end of episode five, that's when I was like, okay, yeah, like I, like I'm enjoying it a lot now, right? Episode one was pretty good. Episode two was a little bit better. I like Buggy, which is like what we just finished with. Yeah, Buggy was good. And episode three and four were okay. Like I think those episodes were okay. And then episode five, just after starting from episode five, from like, okay, yeah, I'm I'm invested now. And then by the end of it. When like at, at the end of season one, I'm like, okay, I want I want more, and I'm not fucking gonna wait for a season two to come out, right? I'm just, so that's when I started like I'm just gonna watch the anime now. So yeah, it's a type of show that makes you want to know more about the universe, know more about the the characters and the backstories of all of them. And the cool thing is that you get to see the differences they made and why they made it. And I agree that some of them that the stuff they did was unnecessary because there are some race swaps, right? But that that's not a big thing. It wasn't a big issue for me because it yeah, wasn't yeah. it it wasn't important. It was just like okay, this race off someone of the characters, which is what it is, what it is, right? But it makes it made me want to watch. Hopefully, not all one thousand episodes because there's more than that. But it, it made me interested. So the reason why I'm bringing it up, this comes to us from Bounding in the Comics. It says One Piece creator uh, Ichiro Oda officially confirms Netflix's live action series to receive a second season. So according to what, to what I heard, they actually already wrote it. I heard they wrote it prior or I don't know, maybe during the strike. I'm not sure if they did it secretly, but like what what are you going to be writing, though, most of the time? You know, like you sort of have a Bible. You're only going to be writing what they're going to say in translation. But what do you think about um, it getting season two? Yeah, well deserved. Well deserved, in my opinion. It's, it's a no brainer. It's, it's like it's um, it was really well done to introduce people new people like us into the show into the franchise mm-hmm. and yeah uh I, i'm happy for them it's like uh the entire cast did did it um did their job well um it's so refreshing that they're not actually preaching to you about some identity politics bs <laughs> yeah it's like and yeah it's actually they just they're just there to entertain and yeah you can tell that the entire cast was having fun doing playing out their roles in the show it's like oozing with so much passion and yeah, yeah. Um, i'm excited for it yeah like so now, now here's the thing the reason i think it was episode five or episode six but that i think that episode i forgot which one it was it's the one with the backstory of one of the characters to have a big mustache like for me i'm like that episode was really good it actually like in a way made me sort of like feel bad like i'm like oh shit oh fuck you know like it's it's good, right? Especially when a character that you thought that was sort of be like an asshole, and you're like, oh, should I actually feel bad for this character, or wow, I actually really really hate this character, is because that means that the actors and the writers did are in the uh, and the directors did a great enough job where it made me believe those characters to be what they wanted to be, either good, bad, or whatever. You did uh, if you, you know, like don't like them, you're like, oh, because they're meant to be like that. Right, specific characters like you know um professor umbridge was supposed you're supposed to hate her right from harry potter but let's uh, let's actually read this article 
In a moment well-deserved for the series that most would agree set a new standard for Western live-action adaptations, uh, sorry, anime adaptations, franchise creator Eiichiro Oda has confirmed that Netflix's One Piece will officially be receiving a second season. Uh, esteemed mangaka broke the news to fans in a video shared to the live-action series official Twitter account on September 14th, which was yesterday. Engaging in his usual practice of hiding his identity, this time behind a Shonen Jump author's corner avatar, Oda began his message to fans by picking up a receiver to a custom snail transponder prop and asking fans to the Straw Hat uh, Grand Fleet, what did you think of season one of the live action at uh, One Piece? Which is really cool. Which is re this thing is sort of creepy, in my opinion, <laughs> when you see yeah, it in the show. I, 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 oh, oh, that's part of the show. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's part I of the know. show. I haven't seen that. Okay. You I think you'll see it. You should have seen it probably uh at I've the seen, end of episode one, I believe. Yeah, I've seen yeah, the the axe guy, right? He has pet snails, I believe. Yeah, he, he had like a snail thing that he talks to. Yeah. He, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. Um Offering his gratitude to fans, both Ode and New, for the support of the series, Oda then asserted, I spent a long time working on it with Netflix and Tomorrow Studios. It seems people around the world have been enjoying the show, which makes the hard work from the production team truly worth it. To everyone who's been a fan of One Piece for years and those who experienced One Piece for the first time, thank you so much, he added. And like I mentioned last time, um, no, I didn't mention last time. I mentioned it on, 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 my, uh, on my kick, but um Oda originally didn't want was approached a long time ago in probably the late 90s to early 2000s to do a one piece live action adaptation. He was approached a long time ago and he said, "Bitch, fuck no. You guys going to ruin my shit. I know I don't ever want to do it until he watched Shaolin Soccer." Gray, no, yeah, yeah. have you watched Shaolin Soccer yet? Not yet. <laughs> Yeah, we, we talked about it in your stream and kick, but yeah, I, I didn't get the time to watch that. Okay. So um I in my opinion, it's it's an extremely wacky t uh movie that um that has action and comedy and it has the same wacky lightheartedness, like what uh, you sort of see where he got that lightheartedness from. Did you watch Kung Fu Hustle? Probably not. Okay, you should watch Kung Fu Hustle as well. Those two movies are Stephen Chow's, uh, I'll say, best movie that, that he's known for now, right? They both have they both have comedy. Shaolin Soccer has way more comedy. Uh, Kung Fu Hustle, is, it's more action-based. It's because it's an actual martial arts film versus Shaolin Soccer is not about martial arts. It's, it's about sports with martial arts in it. So definitely watch Shaolin Soccer and watch uh, Kung Fu Hustle. And if you want, you should make a video on them. It's because they're it, it those those two movies are good. Everyone loves them. Every, like people are still waiting for Kung Fu Hustle too, right? Shaolin Soccer is so good. Yep, exactly. Yeah, it's uh it's really 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 good. Go go ahead and check it out. And you can see why where he got his inspiration from. Where he was like, okay, I sort of want to do this movie now. So check out Shaolin Soccer. Let's see, let's continue. In light of the re reception to the series, Oda then revealed that much of the delight of many a viewer. Two weeks after that launch, I just received some great news. Netflix has decided to renew the show. The Adventures of Inaki and the live-action Straw Hats will continue onward, he further exclaimed. It'll uh, it still take a while to get the scripts ready, so please pre uh, be patient. Drawing his message to a close, Oda ultimately teased from here on, it seems to me the Straw Hats will need a great doctor. We will see. Before sketching a quick illustration of the Straw Hats resident uh, medical expert Tony Tony Chopper, which is a uh, which is actually a um like a teddy bear character. It looks like yeah, it looks like a what's I, it called again? Like a like yeah, a Pokemon. I, I imagine that's a household character in the end that hasn't yeah. been shown yet. Yeah, yeah. So um, I I haven't seen it, but I know Tony Tony Chopper is supposed to be a part of the crew. Let's see. In a fun bit of trivia, it should be noted that Oda's reference to Chopper's inevitable straw hat membership is not the first time the human-deer hybrid has been mentioned in the context of the live-action series. Rather, Chopper's existence was first hinted at in the opening moments of the first season's sixth episode, The Chef and the Chore Boy, which is uh, the, the, we don't want to do. Uh, I think this might be too much, uh, too much, uh, what's the called again? Spoiler for you. 
I yeah, this, okay. this might be some spoilers, but yeah. But according to what I heard, let's go and stop here for, for with the article. But according to what I heard, Netflix is eyeing a twelve season. Is eyeing twelve seasons of One Piece. I mean, I it, it has one thousand two hundred episodes, <laughs> so it can it twelve episodes is uh, twelve seasons is fine. I, I mean, it, it can manage. It's not you already have the template, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, but, good on uh, Oda that he yeah. he he got a new, um, it the franchise is now ho- on a whole new level, as if it's not already on a high level already. Yeah, and the thing is that One Piece is probably still the biggest anime and uh, manga in Japan. It's still one of the biggest ones, right? You get stuff like Spy Family or One Punch Man that comes in. And then it disappears for a little bit and it comes in and disappears a little bit. One Piece has always been at the top, at least top five to top 10, right? Um, I I think overall they made a, a fan out of uh, out of me for sure. Um, yeah. I didn't, like I said, I, I didn't care anything about One uh, One Piece at all, right? My brother yeah. has been reading it ever since, like he's been reading it for over 10 years. My other brother, uh, he said that, oh, um, I think he got COVID one time in uh in 2020 and uh he he was like you know i i'm sick i don't have anything to do i want to go out and then my other brother was like hey you should start getting into one piece and he's like how many episodes are there and he's like just read the manga you don't have to worry about fillers or anything it took him three months to catch up and he said that he read every single day he said he couldn't stop he said once he got into it, he couldn't stop. And that's sort of where I was too. When I was watching Naruto, right before Shippuden happened, I was like, bitch, there's so many fucking fillers. When I want more Naruto right now, right? I want to watch more. And then my brother's like, why don't you just fucking read it? They're like several arcs ahead. I'm like, fine. And then I read and I never went back. And the only time I ever went back was if I wanted to see a cool fight. So, yep, they made a, f- a fan out of me. I would say, uh, and Gray, I think uh, once you're done, I have a feeling that you might actually start watching it. Like, like especially after, like, after you finish watching everything. Like, there's some really good emotional beats. Um, the show doesn't have any woke moments at all. Of course, there, there, there's strong females for sure. But there's one point in the show where it talks about um, Zoro's background. It's sort of you're like, hey, that's. This is base. This is a base show. And you'll see which part I'm talking about. Like he's talking to a girl and then she says some ba- really base things. You're like, hell yeah. There's no woke moments. And the, the funniest thing is I watched that scene in the anime and that scene where it's based is not in the anime. They added it oh, for the live action. Really? Yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah. So um, you, you'll like it. Just, just check it out, man. Check it out. Thanks for checking out this segment of the Project Egg Row podcast. If you like what we do here, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and you will know next time when we go live. We do go live every Saturday at 8 p.m. Once again, we are just getting started. Tons of more video to come. Thanks, and we'll see you guys next time.